Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the thriller mystery films from 1997, titled Breakdown. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The movie begins with Jeff Taylor, and his wife, Amy, driving cross-country from Boston to San Diego in their sleek new Jeep Grand Cherokee. Faced with recent financial challenges, they've made the bold decision to relocate in search of better opportunities. However, their car is on loan, adding pressure to their quest for stability, and debt repayment in the new city. During their eventful trip, as Jeff reaches for a bottle in the back seat. A worn-out pickup truck abruptly emerges, demanding Jeff's swift reflexes to evade a collision, and he firmly blames the driver for his reckless driving. Taking a break at a gas station to refuel and grab some snacks, Jeff and Amy find themselves unexpectedly face-to-face -face with Earl, the truck driver from earlier. Initially, Earl admires Jeff's car, but quickly transitions to criticizing Jeff for the near collision on the road. Wanting to avoid any further conflict, Jeff offers a sincere apology, urging Earl to forget about it and move on. I want to be more careful who you ride with. Despite Jeff's attempts to defuse the situation, Earl departs in a fit of anger, leaving Jeff and Amy to resume their journey to San Diego. Everything is going fine as they chat about a stroke of luck, an astonishing $90,000 lottery win from a junk food purchase. However, their smooth journey takes an unexpected turn when their car breaks down, leaving them stranded in the middle of nowhere. The husband tries to call for assistance, but to no avail because the signal is out of reach. Luck appears to be on their side when a passing truck catches their attention. But it turns out to be Earl's truck, which is unfortunate because he doesn't stop and instead mocks them. His arrival sparks concern, as his intentions seem less than favorable when he turns his car around to face them. Just as tension mounts, a large truck pulls up alongside Jeff's vehicle, forcing Earl to abandon his plans, and leave the scene swiftly. Warren, the nice truck driver, extends his assistance to the couple, offering to assess the car's condition. After a quick examination, he suspects the vehicle may have overheated, and he suggests dropping them off at a nearby diner five miles away, where they can use the pay phone to arrange a tow truck. Despite the generous offer, Jeff decides to wait on the road, allowing the car some time to cool down before attempting to restart it. Amy thinks of taking the ride to call for a tow truck, while also grabbing refreshing cold beverages to combat the scorching summer heat. With Jeff's approval, she gets into the truck, leaving him behind with the car. After a period of waiting on the road, Jeff inspects the car once more, discovering that a few wires had come loose, which was the cause of the breakdown. The car works again after the wires are connected, allowing Jeff to proceed straight to the diner to meet his wife. The husband arrives at the mentioned diner, however, to his dismay, Amy is nowhere to be found. Despite questioning the rude bartender and other patrons, Jeff doesn't get a lead. After leaving a message for Amy with the bartender, Jeff sets off to search the town. Along the way, he spots a truck resembling Warren's, and tries to flag down the driver. Surprisingly, the driver turns out to be Warren himself, but Amy is absent. When questioned, Warren claims to have no knowledge of a woman, and insists he has never met Jeff before. Puzzled, Jeff peeks inside the truck, but finds nothing. At that moment, a police car grabs his attention, prompting him to seek assistance. Deputy Len Carver emerges from the vehicle, and upon hearing Jeff's concerns, initiates an investigation into Warren, who insists that he has never met Jeff or Amy. The cop then proceeds to examine his truck, but despite a thorough inspection, no signs of a struggle or evidence linking Warren to Amy's disappearance are found. Eventually, Deputy Len begins to trust Warren's side of the story, considering the possibility that Jeff may have confused the two similar-looking trucks. He also suggests that Amy might have left willingly, citing similar cases he has encountered, but Jeff remains unwilling to accept this theory, as he knows his relationship with his wife. With no concrete evidence, Deputy Len releases Warren, leaving Jeff feeling helpless, convinced that Amy was in that truck. At the police station, 
His anxiety intensifies as he observes numerous photographs of missing individuals, particularly middle-aged women like Amy. As it hasn't been 24 hours since Amy's disappearance, the police won't take action unless they receive a ransom call or find evidence of forced abduction. Filled with distress and fear for his wife's safety, Jeff turns to the bartender once again, hoping for more information about Amy. Unfortunately, his inquiries yield unsatisfactory responses. Growing increasingly desperate, Jeff decides to force the bartender to show him the customer receipts, hoping to determine if Amy has visited the diner. A heated argument erupts between them, and it gets so bad that the bartender brandishes a gun, pointing it at Jeff, compelling him to leave the diner. A glimmer of hope emerges when an innocent man named Billy steps forward, claiming to have seen Amy. According to Billy, Amy arrived at the diner in one truck, went inside, and then left with another man in a different truck. Billy reveals that the man took her towards Route 7 by the river, and when Jeff seeks additional information, Billy explains that they don't share such details with him, his gaze fixed on the bartender who has just come outside to monitor Jeff. Jeff then urges Billy to accompany him to the police, but Billy dismissively calls him a dummy, and asserts that the police are involved in the situation. Left with no other choice, Jeff decides to take matters into his own hands, and heads straight to Route 7 in search of Amy. However, he is met with a shocking encounter when the road is closed, and he comes face to face with the armed Earl. Filled with confusion, Jeff quickly reverses his car and attempts to escape, with Earl relentlessly pursuing him. The road is blocked by two vehicles, forcing Jeff to veer off onto a different path, only to find himself at a dead end. With Earl closing in, he takes a daring plunge down the slope, causing his car to crash into the river. In a bid to escape from Earl's clutches, Jeff decides to abandon the vehicle. He follows the water's flow, and successfully evades the immediate danger. Though his car is now being taken by Earl, he has managed to survive, which really matters in the end. But all of a sudden, he is apprehended by an unexpected member of the gang, Billy, the seemingly innocent guy outside the diner. Jeff finds out that Earl and Billy are the ones who took his wife, Amy, and that they are holding her for ransom. Amy had mentioned that Jeff has $90,000 in their home bank account, and the husband has a sudden realization when Earl says something about junk food. Unbeknownst to the criminals, $90,000 is merely a number the couple noticed on a piece of junk food during their journey. As Jeff steps out of the car, he is astonished to come face to face with Warren, who happens to be the mastermind behind the gang. Without wasting time, he instructs Jeff to make his way to the town, and personally relay to the bank manager his request for a prompt wire transfer from his account. Time is of the essence, as Jeff must secure the funds within the next 50 minutes, before Deputy Len concludes his patrol. Warren tells Jeff that they'll be watching him every step of the way, and he will send him pieces of his wife from time to time if he fails to do it. And so, Jeff is forced to follow Warren's instructions, and heads directly to the town's bank, fully aware that he only has $5,000 in the bank. Inside the bank, the manager sees Jeff's distress and becomes suspicious, wondering if something is wrong with him. He tries telling the truth at one point, but the presence of a suspicious individual within the bank prevents him from doing so. The bank manager appears to have gotten his hint, and he asks him to hold tight while they bring the cash. While waiting for the transaction to unfold, Jeff seizes the moment to discreetly explore the bathroom for a potential weapon. Regrettably, he comes up empty-handed as nothing suitable fits into his clothing. When he goes back to the table, he gets lucky and finds a blade that the bank manager left there on purpose. After getting the money, he gets further instructions to locate a car on the main road. Shortly after that, Earl arrives, demanding Jeff's obedience and the surrender of the money. Despite Jeff's desire to see his wife first, the sight of Earl brandishing a pistol leaves him with no alternative, and instead, he gets hit in the face. With Jeff's hands securely duct taped, Earl contacts his partners, while admitting that he tampered with the wires in Jeff's car at the gas station, and that his group intends to kill them anyway. Jeff persists in using the stolen sharp tool to cut through the tape, and when Earl opens the bag, he finds bundles of $1 bills instead of the expected $90,000. 
After a fierce struggle, Jeff manages to take control of the car from Earl, who is restrained with his hands and neck bound to the seat. By accelerating the vehicle, and repeatedly braking to choke Earl, he tortures Earl into disclosing Amy's whereabouts, which are at a truck stop. Just as things seem to be falling into place, Deputy Lent unexpectedly arrives on the scene, ordering Jeff to stop the car. Mistakenly perceiving Jeff as a criminal, Deputy Lynn disregards Jeff's pleas about Amy's abduction and Earl's involvement in the case. Seizing the opportunity, Earl escapes the vehicle, and fires at Deputy Lynn before going after Jeff. However, before he can hurt him, the injured officer retaliates and shoots Earl, rendering him immobile. After calling for an ambulance through the police radio to assist Deputy Lynn, Jeff embarks on his mission to locate Amy at the truck station. At the truck station, Jeff locates Warren having a conversation with Billy over the phone. Sensing an hour-long silence from Earl, Warren instructs Billy to bring Amy to his barn for a crucial discussion regarding her destiny. Initially intent on apprehending Warren, Jeff's priorities shift upon learning about Amy's whereabouts. As the boss of the gang leaves for his house, Jeff seizes the opportunity to catch a ride on the truck's base, successfully finding a hiding spot. After a lengthy journey, Warren arrives at his barn, where he is greeted by his son Deke, and wife, Arlene. Taking advantage of Warren opening the barn gate to unload items, Jeff seizes the moment to scale the roof, and gain entry through a window. Inside, he discovers that Amy is not the gang's sole abductee, the barn is filled with the belongings of previous victims. Shortly after that, Billy and Al arrive with Amy, who turns out dead due to the intense heat of the truck's exhaust. Jeff is stunned to hear this, while the men decide to bury the body. However, Amy unexpectedly awakens, revealing that she had only fallen asleep or lost consciousness. As the abductors prepare to lock Amy in the basement fridge, she catches a glimpse of Jeff's eyes peering down at her from above. They then take Amy down to the basement, and lock her up there. Once the gang leaves to have dinner, Jeff searches for tools and attempts to open the basement lock, but his efforts prove futile. Determined to take more drastic action, he retrieves a gun from the truck, and sneaks into the house to look for the bad guys. During dinner, they are shocked when Jeff unexpectedly appears at Warren's home. Jeff holds him at gunpoint while revealing his true profession to Arlene, and that his wife is being held hostage in their barn. Before Jeff can persuade them to comply with his demands, Deke suddenly appears, aiming a rifle at him. The kid says that the gun is always loaded to protect his mother, and so Warren and his wife commands Deke to pull the trigger. But Jeff says the child and the mother have nothing to do with this. Do it! Jeff manages to intervene just in time and redirect the gunshot towards Al, while Billy cunningly escapes capture. With Warren held at gunpoint, Jeff forces him into unlocking the basement door, and instructs Arlene to reveal what's inside the refrigerator. To her horror, she discovers Amy inside, solidifying her realization of her husband's involvement in the abductions. Jeff then decides to confine everyone else in the basement, while Warren still feels he needs to warn Jeff. Afterwards, they spot a tow truck outside the house, so the husband and Amy make a desperate move to escape, but the truck key is not there. At the same time, Billy returns to the house and releases the bad guys from basement. Amy struggles to find the key around the place and finally spot it, but their troubles persist, as Warren arrives with his big truck. Just before Warren can unleash the full force of his truck upon them, the couple narrowly manages to evade his assault and flee to safety. Do you see him? No! As the couple drives, they become aware that they are being pursued by Warren and his accomplices, who are driving their own vehicles. In the chaos of the pursuit, Warren's control over his truck weakens due to traffic, leading to a collision that demolishes Al's vehicle in the process. In a final desperate pursuit, Warren relentlessly chases Jeff until they reach a bridge, where he ultimately gains the upper hand over the couple. Tragedy strikes as Warren's truck runs over Amy's car, trapping her leg in the wreckage. As they tremble perilously on the edge of the bridge, Jeff escapes from his car to confront Warren directly. The truck dangles precariously from the bridge, unfolding a life or death struggle between Jeff and Warren.
As they struggle for control, Warren secures a chain around his wrist, intending to use it against Jeff. In a twist of fate, Jeff manages to gain the upper hand, causing Warren to plummet onto the rocks below that claim his life. Jeff swiftly ascends, and assists Amy in freeing her trapped leg. Once out of the car, they share a heartfelt embrace. They finally turn their attention to the one who caused all of this suffering, only to find him miraculously alive. This makes Amy so angry that she triggers the truck to plummet, crushing Warren beneath it. Okay guys, that's all the recap of Breakdown 1997. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.